here on Morning in America, it's really important to me and all of our team to hear from you, all of you watching and streaming live and welcoming you into the conversation. So we're answering some of your questions live on the air. And today we're focusing on small business owners. Teresa Sardisco owns two pizza restaurants in San Pedro, California, and she has a couple of questions. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Adrian. How are you this morning? I'm doing wonderful. I would love some pizza wonderful. right now. I don't know where it is, but <laughs> I'll get some next time. Oh, pizza's good always. It's always good. It's always good, even cold pizza. We're joined by business leadership coach Dr. Lisa Brooks Giroux. I hope I'm wait, am I saying that right? Griot? Yeah. Griot. Forgive me. I had my pronouncer sheet all fancy schmancy for us here and I lost it. But good morning to both of you. Okay, so Teresa, you're the third generation owner of two Italian restaurants called Dominic's Pizza. How yes. challenging has the past year or two been for you? I can tell you it's definitely been uh, a different. <laughs> um, you, d you don't realize uh, what an impact things can make until your restaurant is shut down and only for takeout. Uh, the customers had to be retaught on how to do takeout or, um, you know, come on in. And most of the people would come in and just sit down. We're mainly a sit down restaurant. Mm -hmm. So those people that usually would uh, eat in had to get accustomed to taking food home, which took a little bit of time. Yeah. So and to adjust, yeah, I, I know that's hard. It, yeah. Going yeah. from dine in to takeout is a whole yeah. other animal. Um, yes. you, you have a question, not just about the past couple of years, but inflation. Uh, you've already had to raise prices on your menu for a, a lot of yeah. your items to try to keep up. So what would you like to ask Dr. Lisa? Hi, Dr. Lisa. Um, hi. I'd like to know, hi, um, how can I get ahead of the rising cost of goods? Yeah, so Teresa, I mean, you're struggling as so many other small businesses right. and myself, I'm a small business too, so I feel your pain. And what, I, what a lot of businesses have had to do is a couple of things. Number one, get really creative, right? Um, in, in your instance, because you're, you know, you're open to the public, what you may want to think about doing is opening an hour later, um, and maybe closing an hour earlier. And I know that's like, wow, we're a business, we wanna stay open all the time. But what that does, it, it helps you with your labor costs, first and foremost, and it also helps on your utilities. So that's one thing that comes to mind for me. Another thing is taking a look at your inventory. Um, oftentimes, you know, some businesses carry too much inventory and then it goes to waste. So I would reevaluate looking at my inventory. And here's one, my last tip that's really overlooked for small businesses is ask our employees, how do we, how do we become more efficient? How can we cut costs without cutting quality and or without cutting the service? And oftentimes our employees know best because they're closest to it and they really want to help. They really want to stay in, they want the business to stay in business and they want to be part of it. And oftentimes we overlook the people who are closest to it. So that's one of the things that's really helped me. And I think oftentimes too, we have to rethink how we're doing things. I mean, we get into a comfort zone, we get into a track that works for us, uh, and then we keep doing it. And sometimes it's no longer working for us. And the pandemic has kind of forced us to rethink things, unfortunately. Yeah, well, we think a lot of things, including a life-work balance, because it's just like people have had to work nonstop. And I'm sure it's that same question, uh, issue for restaurant owners. Uh, you had a question about how to rebrand, right? Go ahead, Teresa. Yes. Okay. Um, how can we, uh, re we've been in business 60 six years in one location and 42 in the other. How can I rebrand the business post pandemic without spending a ton of money? So this is a, and this is a great question too. And, um, and congratulations for being in business for so long because that's truly a legacy for, for your family. And one of those ways to start to thinking about rebranding and you know how do we create a, a new name and reputation for our business. One of the things I might suggest to you is um, bartering. And one of those ways is bartering perhaps with a marketing firm or you know, with an advertising firm, so bartering with them for services. And what I mean by that is you need to rebrand, maybe perhaps kick off a new marketing campaign. That's what they do for a living. And in turn, perhaps you can supply them with pizza or, or maybe even cater um, an event for them. 
So what you're really doing is you're not having that cash outlay, but you're getting what you need. They're getting what they need. And I actually did that myself. Mm -hmm. I needed a new logo. So I bartered with a, a marketing design firm to create a logo for me and I provided training for them. Does that sound oh, good, good, Teresa? Sounds good to me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pay with pizza. I know a lot of people <laughs> would be into that. All right, uh, Teresa, Dr. Lisa, thank you guys so much for being with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having thank me. You. Thank Thanks. you. Good luck, Teresa. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.